Hi there! In this video, we go back to the high frequency sections of the theremin. In particular, we will work on the pitch variable oscillator, which, along with the pitch reference oscillator that we already built, provides the actual sound of the theremin through the heterodyne process that happens within the mixer. If you don't remember the details of the block diagram or the working principle of the theremin, I suggest you to go back and watch the previous episodes of the series. And now, let's get into the design, build and test of the pitch variable oscillator. Hi there! I am Carlo Carrano and this is Electronics Engineering Made Easy! The schematic of the pitch variable oscillator resembles very closely the one of the pitch reference oscillator, but with a couple of differences. Like the pitch reference oscillator, the pitch variable oscillator works in the LF radio band, otherwise known as low frequency band, and in particular just below the frequency of the pitch reference oscillator. This way, the heterodyne process will extract the difference of the frequencies of the two signals and we will have a resulting wave that has a frequency in the audio band. Like the reference oscillator, the pitch variable oscillator is based on the principle of the tuned amplifier oscillator. Here, the resonator tank is provided by the inductor L5, the capacitors C3, C5 and C6, and by the antenna attached to the resonator through the additional inductors L1 through L4. To understand how this circuit works, you have to think of the antenna as a sort of capacitor, which values can be changed by moving a hand in X proximity. The closer the hand to the antenna, the greater the capacity, and the greater the capacity, the lower is the frequency of the resonator tank. When the frequency of the resonator tank becomes smaller, the difference between the frequency of the pitch reference oscillator and this one increases, and thus this causes the theremin to play the higher pitches. So the hand closer to the antenna produces higher pitches, the hand farther away to the antenna produces the lower pitches. The presence of the inductor L1 through L4 is necessary to make the change in capacity of the antenna more linear so that changes in distance of the hand from the antenna will cause equal changes in frequency. Without these inductors, the frequency would change much faster when the hand is closer to the antenna than when it is farther away. Note that, in the schematic, the antenna is connected to the inductor L1. However, in practice, we will make possible to connect the antenna to either one of these four inductors so we can choose the amount of inductive reactants that better linearizes the response of the oscillator to the moving of the hand of the player. The capacitor C3 is relatively low in respect to the one in the pitch reference oscillator, and this is to compensate for the extra capacitance introduced by the antenna. However, its value is determined really empirically, so when we will test the output signal of the theremin, we might have to adjust this value, increasing it or decreasing it a little bit. But that is for another time. The rest of the circuit replicates the one of the reference oscillator. The only thing that is still different, you see that is the missing potentiometer that adjusts the polarization of the transistor Q1, which was attached in the pitch reference oscillator to the base of the transistor Q1. For further information on how this oscillator works, please review the video of the pitch reference oscillator in the theremin series. For your convenience, I posted a link to that video in the description below, along with a link to the video related to the theremin block diagram. The pitch variable oscillator is built in the space of the lower right side of the perf board, where the other blocks of the instrument were assembled. However, the four inductors L1, L2, L3 and L4 are assembled on a separate perf board to make sure they are far enough from each other so that the electromagnetic fields generated by each inductor will not influence the others. 
This perf border will be attached directly to the theremin case cover, close to the pitch antenna. The connector at the right side will be used to connect the board to the pitch variable oscillator, while the other connectors will be used to connect the antenna. We will choose the one that provides the better linearity for controlling the frequency of the output signal. In this picture we can see the assembled oscillator. Noticeable are the two variable capacitors on the far right and the transistor on the bottom right. And here is a close-up view of the oscillator where you can clearly see all the components. Toward the center of the picture you can also see the two prongs connector that will be attached to the inductor's board, and the one prong connector used as a test point to visualize the output of the oscillator through an oscilloscope. This is our circuit under test. You can clearly see the two variable capacitors. The transistor is hidden down here. Let me show you. Here it is. And then uh, this one here uh, the con is the connector that goes to this device, which basically allows us to select how many inductors we put between the oscillator and the antenna. We will uh, decide this when it's the time to test the combination of the pitch reference oscillator and the pitch variable oscillator and we'll choose the number of inductors that work best to have as much linearity as possible when moving the head in front of the antenna in front of the pitch antenna so back to the circuit We are going to test it by connecting right now just the output, which is this single pin here, to the oscilloscope, and verify that the oscillator actually produces a sine wave. And we will also move around a little bit to the two variable oscillators to make sure that changing the capacity of the oscillation tank produces a change in the frequency. So let's connect the oscillator to the power supply. Let's connect the probe. We will put the alligator to the ground and the actual probe will go to the output of the oscillator. Then I will turn on the oscillator once we are ready to see the wave. So let me turn it on now. And apparently nothing happens. Alright, because I didn't turn it on really. Now, here it is. Oh, nice. Look at that. A very nice wave. And right now it's giving us 188.6 kilohertz. Remember that the frequency will decrease once we increase the capacity. So once we connect the actual antenna this frequency will go down and we will be able to further tune it once we adjust the variable capacitors. So, let's see if we can make this frequency change. This is with the first capacitor. Here I'm increasing it. And... Okay, let's try the other one. But definitely I can change the frequency, as you can see.
Okay, I think it's enough now. Eventually, if we have to fine tune this frequency and we realize that this is not enough, we will have just to adjust the circuit, adding one extra capacitor to the oscillation tank, and then it should work fine. And so, another episode of the Theremin project is ended. In the next episode, we will introduce the mixer, so we will be able to compose the two signals from the pitch reference oscillator and from the pitch variable oscillator, and finally hear, for the first time, the actual sound of the theremin. Before I go, let me remind you one more time to click on the like button, if you are so inclined, and if you would like to be notified for free of the next video I will post, don't forget to subscribe and to click on the bell that shows up once you have subscribed to the channel. See you in the next video, and in the meantime, happy experiments!